You are listening to Sean Kelly Interviews, a presentation of Sean Kelly on Movies at www.skonmovies.com. Now, here is your host, Sean Kelly. Hello, and welcome to another Fantasia edition of uh, Sean Kelly Interviews. So, in this episode, I am going to uh, play for you uh, some of the the interviews I uh, did with uh, filmmakers at Fantasia. So, um, first up, I have an interview with Michael Mort, who is a British animator and a director of the stop motion film Chuck Steele, Night of the Trampires. So, I'm just going to get straight to it. Well, okay, I'm um, going to start off. Um, could you talk a bit about the history of the Chuck Steele character and how the uh, feature came to be made? Uh, well, Ch- the character of Chuck Steele I came up with when I was 15 years old uh, as a doodle in my um, school books. I just used to draw it all the time. And I, then I made a few short films in my parents' garage with a Super 8 camera and uh, a college film with the character as well. So it's been with me a long time mm-hmm. and I've always gone back and tried to create a story that I could turn into a feature film and gone back to it over and over again and you know it's taken a while but we've got there now. so um, what were the challenges of creating a feature film for um, Chuck Steele after the previous short film from 2013 uh, the, the short was done in 2014 okay. and the, the hardest thing about the feature is just the scale of it because mm-hmm. we've got so many crowd scenes so many characters running around so many creatures so many Effect. So we were trying to make a big budget film on, on a budget that was, you know, less than most stop motion films. So uh, that was the challenge, but I think we did it. <laughs> so it's like the film stop motion with some additional digital effects for like the explosions and stuff? <laughs> yeah, there, there was a lot of compositing of mm-hmm. effects afterwards, which was, which was live action elements mm-hmm. uh, comped on. And a little bit of CGI in the, in, the, in the cityscapes, but the rest of it was 100% uh, stop motion. Uh, so what are some of the um, influences on the character of Chuck <laughs> Um I would say characters like Ash from Evil Dead, um, uh, Jack Burton from, from uh, Big Trouble in China, uh, Bruce... Willis character in Die Hard and John McClane so uh, it's an amalgamation really of, of all those 80s action heroes mm-hmm. and Stallone especially in, Co- in Cobra Was it always your intention for the film to have a horror element on top of the 1980s action tropes? Hmm? Yeah because I didn't I didn't want it to be I think if I had just stuck with, hot, uh, with action I think it would have been predictable as a film because mm-hmm. I think it would have just been a spoof of action movies, and I wanted it to, to be a, to go in surprising directions, and also I wanted to do a lot of stuff that um, in stop motion that hadn't been done. You know, um, and I, in terms of the gore and the monsters and the the, 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 the uh, creature effects and things like that. Mm-hmm. So, approximately, how many, how long did it take to make this film? <laughs> um, well, it's taken us a, 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 almost four years to get to this point. So. Um, we had to set up a studio to make it, which uh, and, and, and then shooting the film. That all took us about three years, and then wrapping it all up, post production, and getting it out to the festivals where we are now is uh, around about five, four, four years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so <coughs> you hope to make more Chuck Steele adventures? <laughs> yeah, definitely. We want to make uh, sequels. You know, we've got I've got ideas for sequels, but what we need to do is get this film out there. Get the public behind it if they like it, you know, and then we'll, we'll make more. Um, so, um, what do you feel is like the general reaction to the film from yesterday's film? <laughs> um, it seemed to go well. What did you think? Oh, I enjoyed it very much. Yeah, I mean, everyone, uh, I could hear a lot of laughter there, so that was good. Um, I was trying to hear whether, you know, people were reacting in the right places, and it just seemed to be. Uh, seem to be a really sort of lively audience in there. Mm-hmm. I'm happy with it. Yeah. That's actually all the questions I have, so... Okay, all right. And that was my interview for Chuck Steele, Night of the Trampires. 
Uh, so, um, up next I have some of the cast and crew of The Ranger. So, I um, spoke with director Jen Wexler, producer Heather Buckley, and stars Chloe Levine and Jeremy Holm about this punk rock slasher film that takes place in the wilderness. It's a pretty good interview, so let's get right to it. So, so um, how did the idea for the Ranger come about? Um, so I went to college, uh, I was in a screenwriting major, and my classmate wrote a version of the Ranger as his like, senior screenplay, uh, but I always loved the idea of these punks that go up against this killer park ranger, because it just feels very classic, and uh, like brings to mind all these crazy comic book colors just in, in that log line by itself. Um, and then a couple of years later, after I had produced some films, I uh, wanted to uh, direct a project, and I remembered his concept. So um, I gave him a call, and uh, I asked him to find the script so we could work on it together. Uh, his name's Jocko Farino, and we ended up, uh, yeah, working on it and shooting it. So, like, what were your main inspirations for the story? Um, we wanted to kind of combine this, like, outrageous uh, sense of humor that you find in, like, 80s punk movies, like Class of 1984 and Return of the Living Dead and Repo Man with, like, you know, the 80s slasher, with, like, the thrill of the 80s slasher. And then we wanted to kind of center it all around uh, the story of this girl who's trying to find herself amidst all these crazy characters. Yeah. So this is a question that can probably be answered by the actors as well. So, so um, Chelsea's history with the Ranger kind of like sets the story in motion. So, why do you think that he takes him under his wing like he does? I feel like that's a question for Jeremy, who plays the Ranger. You know, there's part of this story that not even Chloe and I know the beginning of. We know there is a beginning of this story, and we sense that it has to do with perhaps a picnic table that they once sat around together. Maybe there was a, a fire pit. There might have been some s'mores. We know that they're bound together in some way, and it's a pretty deep bond, and it's... Well, we, we don't really know what the nature of the bond is. We just know that it's intense and it's intimate. And so when we made the movie, uh, Chloe and I didn't know each other, and so we just had to shoot for something that was thrilling in that direction and I think you know the ranger naturally looks in the mirror and when he looks at Chloe he sees the same thing mm-hmm. okay well a more specific question for um, oh, Chelsea um, uh, she like hangs with this um, punk rock group of friends while also kind of like seeming out of the place in the lifestyle so how do you feel that her childhood experiences influenced the person that Chelsea becomes? Um, well, I think that she ends up being a punk because she feels sort of like she doesn't fit. And I think that um, the opening of that was a cool idea. Um, and as for like not really fitting in with the punk, sort of like. I thought about it as she had these friends for like a really long time and she was just sort of fell from them. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um yeah, I think it's just kind of like somebody who's trying to figure out her place in the world and figure out who she is. Uh and yeah, she's fallen in with uh this group of friends. And I mean the group of friends they're like a family unit and they love each other and they look out for each other and they also you know, make fun of each other. Um, but uh, for Chelsea, I think she's just trying to figure out: is this is this the scene she wants to be in? What's next for her? Um, and also, like, she's just trying to figure out some internal stuff that led her here to begin with. Okay, so another question about the Ranger character. So, um, so the Ranger seems completely against anything that is not in tune with nature. So, um, what do you feel his um, motives are for targeting Chelsea and her friends? Uh, you know, we might have had a different story had these young folks come up to learn how to carve a canoe out of a log and you know, make a TV. 
or survive overnight you know, alone. But that's not what they were doing. <laughs> and I think the ranger senses that immediately. Um, you know, he's going to target anybody who defiles nature. He's going to target anyone who throws a cigarette butt on the ground. And he's going to make them pay for it. He's sort of got like an American Indian sensibility about him. Maybe, you know, maybe that was part of his upbringing. Um, but when he realizes who's with them, the nature of that target really changes for him. It shifts. Something else. It opens a, a door of weakness in his heart. Sure. And changes the story. Well, on a kind of a relatable note, despite kind of being the victim of the film, the ranger is also still somewhat of a relatable character, so what were the challenges which that came with bringing this character to the screen? Uh, I'm sorry, what, was the, what were the challenges? Yeah. Well, he's, a, he's, a, he's an archetype, he's a stereotype, but he's a real person. I mean, it sounds ridiculous because this is a... This is a horror movie, it's a, it's a slasher movie, it's a punk rock movie, but he's a real person, mm -hmm. so in each of those scenes, it has to, for, for me to do it, it has to come from a very authentic place, and that's what I was uh, striving to do. There's a lot of humor in the, in the film, and I'm not really known for my comedic roles, <laughs> but I, I'll tell you what, with Jen and, uh, and Jocko the writers and Jen the director I had a great time uh, working on that humor but that was probably the big challenge is the juxtaposition between the horror and the, the humor it's also a very uh, hard tone to do because uh, being on set and seeing Jeremy's performance it's because it's like it's actually simul it's simultaneously being funny and intimidating at the exact same time that delivery is just such an edge there's very few actors that can do that and pull it off and one reason why people really relate and love the performance that I've seen in a lot of uh, film Yeah, I think um, something that we kind of talked about early on and something I talked about with some of the other actors as well is kind of like how much are the actors like winking at the camera? How much are uh, seriously are they taking it? And something that was like important to Jocko and I was that in this world everybody is like uh, taking their they, they're taking their character really seriously they don't know they're in a movie because that'll play it, you know that'll play on screen um, but it would I think it would have been a little too over the top if uh, the actors were like winking and laughing along so they all really treat the characters like real people and that allows us to really uh, you know get falls deeply into the story with them well, the film also kind of like hints at a sort of darkness within Chelsea as well. So, where do you think her character would go after the end of the film? Like, wait. Yeah. I mean, I think I was a very. Boy, Vegas. Oh, yeah. Probably Vegas. <laughs> The only answer. Yeah, she's she's found the primal uh, urge within her to go and gamble a lot in Vegas. Yeah. So, um, was there any par particular meaning of like the wolf s symmetry in the film? Lots of meaning. <laughs> I mean, the wolf is there's Chelsea's a lone wolf. The punks are a pack of wolves. Uh, the ranger has a relationship with the wolf and sees the wolf as a very specific type of creature and ultimately Chelsea discovers uh, you know the wolf that's inside her I mean the wolf is a, a, a character that's been used in stories from since the beginning of time and um, it's interesting to see what uh, what the how the different characters relate to the same animal throughout the film. I'm interested in how the director relates to the wolf. <laughs> Personally, I'm much more in the Chelsea camp of uh, feeling like sometimes you have to block out all the noise to discover your own inner wolf. Um, 
So um, how would you say that the Ranger differs from most slasher films, and would you even call it a film a slasher? Mm. So um, historically, uh, what we know as a contemporary slasher film started with the Bay of Blood, mm-hmm. and what really cemented it into America was the Friday the 13th film. So the Friday the 13th films are also known as like body count films. Right? Yeah. And so uh, you have someone, uh, generally a supernatural killer or someone that's not supernatural, killing a bunch of, of, of folks for what they consider to be a moral reason. Uh, examples of that would be, you know, the revenge of the kids fucking around in the woods in Friday the 13th and Jigsaw is angry at people not living, living living their lives. So there is that aspect in that in this personality because there's a body count in this film. There is there is a main bad guy. He is not not too, he's not supernatural. But is it a slasher? What why it's different? And there has been some notes when they talked about the film because the ranger kills differently than a traditional slasher because like Jason has his machete a lot of it is um, a lot of it is uh, shoving sharp objects through young kids yeah. and that is the, the, the MO I know that Jen and I are a huge fan of this movie called Wolf Creek where sort of Mick is using a high powered rifle to like attack everyone so I think there's a combination of the traditional slasher film the idea of like kids in the woods we have a cabin we have a body count there's the idea of sort of the iconic killer that of course everyone wants to grow up to be the weapon choice is slightly different because I think the only time that I've seen a gun in the slasher film is when uh, I believe it's Michael Myers shoves a shotgun through somebody so he's not even using using the using, using the trigger but the difference in all of this is where the heart of the movie is. The heart of the movie is less on the 80s, intense, brutal, frightening slasher cycle, and it's more on like the goosebumps, are you afraid of the dark, Josh Weed spectrum. So the actual heart of the movie, I think is a kind heart, reminds me of sort of like fun at Halloween and things like that. And that is one reason why in itself is very iconic and different than the other stuff that you see in the genre. Dr. Buckley just went to school. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good note to end on, so uh, Thank thanks for uh, Ranger. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> thanks, man. Thanks, Sean. And that was my review for The Ranger. Uh, I have to apologize if um, some of the issues with uh, volume levels in that interview. Um, it came mostly from the fact that um, uh, Chloe Levine is very soft-spoken, and it's, uh, it was hard to hear what she was saying, so I had to try to isolate it a bit in the editing. But um, you get the um, gist of the interview, and that um, lecture at the end by Heather Buckley just made the interview for me. So uh, that's it for uh, this episode of uh, Sean Kelly Interviews. Um, uh, you can read my uh, Fantasia coverage over at the website, and I will see you next time. Sean Kelly Interviews is a production of Sean Kelly on Movies and is hosted by Sean Kelly. The music is Out of the Fog from the website podsummit.com. You can support Sean Kelly and get bonus podcasts at patreon.com slash skonmovies. And you can read Sean Kelly's writing at www.skonmovies.com.